before we get going here, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. By subscribing to my channel, you are helping me build my channel. So whenever you subscribe to anyone's channel, you're really helping them out. So I appreciate it. And let's get into this video about the TAC TCA 42. Today I'm going to be talking about this TAC TCA 42. 42. Uh, this has some significance in the history of reel-to-reel -reel re tape recorders, uh, especially in the consumer market. This was one of TAC's first attempts at offering a multi-track reel-to-reel -reel for the, con the home user, the consumer, not the prosumer, the consumer. And uh, it's, it's really uh, quite a nice little piece. I mean, listen, it's not a professional uh, studio machine. But it's got uh, some, some good functions, and it had really good sound, uh, especially back when it was new. Right now, this particular m machine, eh, it could use a little help, but it does work, and all the channels work. It's a four-channel, one, two, three, four. Um, and what this, uh, if you're not familiar with the old tape machines and, and uh, multi-tracking, what that means is uh, to multi-track, when you're in the studio and you're recording, you lay down separate tracks for um, you know the different instruments. In other words, um, of course, now don't let the word track and channel get you confused because although this is channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four, it's also track one, track two, track three, and track four. So, you know, like in a recording studio, um, you would, uh, and I'm just, I'm just using this as an example. So, you know, don't go, no, that's not how it is. You're supposed to do this first and that first. I'm just using that as an example. You might lay down uh, the rhythm guitar track on, on track one. And then come back, back that up and play it. You got your drummer sitting there, your percussion man. And he listens to track one and records the drums on track two. And then you back that up and maybe we're going to put the uh, lead guitar in here on track three. So that fellow will listen to one and two, listen to the rhythm and the uh, percussion, and then lay down the lead. And uh, then you might put the vocal on track four. But, you know, this is only four tracks or four channels, so you're pretty limited. So you got to get creative. Uh, and one of the things you could do with this machine is what you call ping-ponging. You could lay down, uh, you know, let's just say the, the rhythm guitar on track one, uh, the drums on track two, uh, the lead guitar on track three. And then you could take those three tracks and mix them down onto track four. It's called ping-ponging. Well, that's what they called it back then. So now you have actually mixed those three channels into one, and then you could, uh, you know, play that back, and then you could put the vocal, lead vocal on track one if you wanted. Uh, then play it back again and put the harmony on track two. And you could actually take those two tracks and ping pong them down onto three. And you still have two more tracks to lay in whatever. The thing is, when you start ping ponging, you lose quality of, of the sound. So uh, you, you don't really want to do it very much. And that's why... As, as uh, time progressed, uh, you know, they went from four track or four channel. See, that, that word four track gets you confused, but four channel machines to eight channel machines to 16 channel to 24 channel. Um, 
I've got an eight channel Ampex upstairs. It's a professional studio machine and it's fabulous what you can do with it. But anyway, back to this here TIAC. Um, this was just, this was pretty advanced for the home user. I think this thing uh, probably dates to about, uh, about 1970, somewhere right in there. Uh, maybe 71, not sure, because they, TIAC, after they made this machine, they came out with a better system, uh, a better four channel. And then after that, they came out with even a, 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 a better one. So uh, I think this was around 1970, and it is a little limited. It has what's called Simultrack. And what Simultrack does is, let's just say, uh, you record uh, the rhythm guitar on track one and then you back that up and now the drummer is going to record his stuff on track two so he has to listen to track one but when he records on a tape recorder you have a playback head and a record head and an erase head so the record head and the playback head are you know they're they're spaced a little bit apart which will cause a delay so in multi-track recording what you have to be able to do is when you're listening to track one and recording on track two you have to be able to actually sync that so what you're hearing and what you're recording is going laying down on the tape synchronized and if, if you were listening to track one on the playback head and recording your drums on the record head, there would be, you know, a half second delay there. So what this machine did was when you uh, are multi-tracking like that, when the drummer's listening to the rhythm, it, instead of being played back on the playback head, the record head on track one turns into a playback head. So when the drummer is recording, he's also on the record head and everything is synchronized. And that's what they call simulsync. Other uh, recorders have a little different name for it, but it's all basically the same. So that was quite an advancement uh, for the home people. and and. You know, it's just like now there's all kinds of people who record uh, their stuff and it's so much easier because they have computers and they can, you know, everybody can do their stuff at home in their pajamas. But back in the in the 60s and 70s, uh, boy, this 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 just gave opportunity to people to, to sit at home and or, you know, in the garage or whatever. And a band could record and produce a pretty good demo tape that they could send, uh, whether it be to uh, record producers, record companies, or, you know, they're trying to get a gig somewhere, they could make a tape and send it. So uh, it, it was quite a thing. And this being the first reel-to-reel -reel available for home consumers, man, man, that was a big plus. So anyway, uh, I'm going to take the, the uh, camera off the tripod and get a little close up and at least just kind of show you a little bit about it. Again, I bought this probably, I'm thinking like 20 years ago. I got it off of Craigslist. I've done nothing to it. I have one upstairs that's fully restored and I'll go, uh, go up there and shoot a little footage of that so you can... See, although it doesn't look a whole lot nicer, but it's mounted in this uh, kind of a rare case that they came in. Did I tell you the price on this back in the 70s? I think it was, I, I'm thinking it was like $695. And when you bought it, you could actually just buy the reel-to-reel -reel and one uh, set of amps and save up your money so you could buy the second set cuz it'll function as a it'll it'll function as a stereo reel to reel and with these four amps 
uh, not only will it multi-track, but it, it'll it'll play quad and it'll play forward and reverse. Uh, basically, this bottom unit uh, is a TAC 4010S. And that's a real common, you still see them today, there's lots of them for sale. They're, they're really good, but you know, they weren't really expensive. But that's what this is, but it's been factory reconfigured with four channel heads, record, playback, and erase, the simultrack function, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, we'll get in close on this so you can see it a little better. These are the uh, two top amplifiers. The RA41 stereo record amplifier. Uh, down here you'll see where it says Simultrack for the TCA40. The TCA40 is the series because you could get the 40, the 41, or the 42. The 42 is the full four uh, channel machine. Has your basic functions, play, fast forward, stop, it'll play in reverse, rewind, has a tape counter, brakes are good on it, uh, this tape tension adjustment is pretty manual me uh, mechanical, but you know different tapes could use uh, a little different adjustment. Plays at two speeds, seven and a half, and three and three quarter. Seven and a half uh, is was the normal fast speed for home use. In a studio, you're going seven and a half means uh, seven and a half inches per second that this tape is rolling. Uh, in a studio you're going to run 15 inches per second up to 30 inches per second. The idea, the faster you go, the better the sound. I mean up to a point. You can't roll that tape at 50,000 miles an hour. It's not going to sound too good. Uh, let me turn up a little music and we can see a meter bounce. Okay, and the way you record is I've got to press these two buttons and press the play button. So here goes. There we go. And we have the, uh, the red lights to let us know that it's recording. Hit the stop button. So, you know, there you go. You see the... You see it work? All the lamps and the meters work. That's pretty good for something that's like 50 years old. I'm going to turn the music off so I don't end up getting a copyright violation from YouTube. Okay. Here's the back side, kind of what it looks like. The interconnect cables. Top and fire, bottom, and the uh, guts going into the back of the machine. You can see where it actually from the factory says TCA 42. That's that's a little rare, you know. There's just not a whole bunch of these left. Sweet old machines. Too bad. Uh, too bad I don't have a use for it. It's set down here in my garage, which is climate controlled. It's heated and air conditioned, but um, it just sits and says, somebody use me, please. Anyway, so there you have the TX TCA 42. And um, I'll go upstairs and get a little shot of the, of the, uh, of the one that's restored. This is the restored TCA42 I was telling you about. And as you can see, it's in a uh, 
it's in a cradle and this is the optional cradle that uh, they set in makes them look pretty cool I think but uh, a lot of people never never got the cradle okay I'll just show you it does work I'm pretty sure well, it's on we've got lights fast forward back it fast and uh, these these amplifiers these uh, RA41s they are different than the amplifiers you know, I told you this is a, actually a TAC 4010S. Oh, she's starting to make a little noise. Don't know why. Why not? Um, so these, these particular amplifiers for the simul track, they're different than what actually came with the 4010S probably got you really confused right now <laughs> sorry I thought I had a 4010 s I'm gonna just uh, hold on maybe I maybe I've got one I can show you here is a 4010 s set of amplifiers I use these uh, as a headphone amps you'll see it says TAC what is that? AR504. They look about the same, but they're not. You'll also notice, I, I think the, uh, the other ones are black-faced, or the VUs are different. Let's, let's just walk over there and take a real quick look. I know there's a difference. Yeah. Quite a bit of difference. I mean, same size, same layout, just different. Anyway, there we have it, a fully restored TCA 42. Multi-track consumer reel-to-reel. Thanks for watching.